Matt's going to cook up a real Tebbit family favourite. Whole roast suckling pig with heritage potatoes and beetroot. And for dessert, a spiced apple tart tatan. So this is kind of like a Tebbit celebratory meal. This is the sort of thing I do every year uh, for my daughter's birthday. Her birthday is 1st of May, so it's kind of like an introduction into sort of spring. Um, we're out of the winter, so it's a nice excuse to get people over, get them in the garden, uh, munching down on lots of really good food. So, um, first of all, pig. So we need to get him in the oven. Now, this pig, um, it's about sort of, you know, there's no dressing it up. It's a baby pig, and it's about sort of two to six weeks old. Uh, if you get over that, it tastes delicious. Um, this is quite decadent. It's going to cost you about sort of anywhere between sort of 60 and 80 quid, but it's going to feed 10 people, you know, with lots of other sort of bits and pieces. Uh, this um, is quite small, so it's not going to take that long. So I reckon it's sort of a good three hours on a pig this size. So um, some good oil and massage that into the skin. And then very simply, um, I'm going to do lots of salt all over. I mean, this is, this is not the sort of thing we used to have as kids. This is a kind of a departure uh, for me in terms of what I used to have for birthdays um, and stuff. But um, it's something we've done for about nine years now, uh, every year for my daughter's birthday. And it's just a good excuse to get people over and have a nice time and sit in the garden and drink too much. And usually that time of the year, the weather's pretty good, so... Hence the idea of setting up lovely tables and trying to recreate that thing you know, when you're on holiday and you have lovely sort of big tables of groaning with food and wine and stuff like that. So it's just a nice excuse, really. Right, so lots of garlic. I'm just going to chop some apples up in here. Now, these are going to cook down in about four hours. These are going to cook down and sort of create a sort of pulp, and then I can make a little sauce out of all the thyme and garlic in there. And I'm just shoving it in the belly cavity. So that's going to steam really nicely. And in there, there's just some thyme and some garlic some olive oil and some salt, and that's it. That's pretty much it. Um, the last thing I need to do is get a bit of lemon juice over it. Now, the lemon is good for crisping out the skin. So squeeze it all over, rub it in, and then dump those in. And again, that will create the most delicious juice. There. OK, and that is ready. So that goes in high at about sort of 200 degrees for about sort of three quarters of an hour, um, just to start the skin crisping up. And then I'm going to turn it down to about 160 and just let that fat sort of melt over it, and that goes into the flesh. It's delicious. So it's going to be in the oven for about sort of three to four hours, you know, and it should be sort of meltingly tender. Right. So to go with that, basically just anything sort of in season at the time. Um, obviously, you start. So I've got some potatoes and some beetroot. So I'm going to throw all these into a tray and the whole point of this kind of food is that it's minimal fuss and preparation, really, because there's enough going on, getting wine chilled down and getting the place looking nice and dressing the kids and doing that sort of thing, it's apart from worrying about what the food's doing. So it's nothing, there's nothing intricate about this at all. It's just good, gutsy food. So that's just uh, some raw beetroot and raw potatoes. I've got some sliced garlic in there, some good oil, uh, a little bit of thyme, salt and pepper. So that'll go in the oven uh, at about 180 degrees for roughly an hour, just until both the beetroot and the potatoes soft. Just put a knife through it. It's nice and, nice and smooth. Over three hours, Matt bastes and keeps an eye on his roasted pig until eventually it's ready to be served. He's looking good. The veggies have been in for about an hour, so it's all ready to come out now. But I have to admit, this is kind of a, quite a self-indulgent dish. It wasn't something that the kids aged one would have asked for, a little baby pig cooked uh, on their birthday. But, you know, we used to get one day off um, a week from the restaurant, and I always wanted to sort of go for it on that day. You know, eat too much, drink too much, uh, and really indulge myself. And that's why I started cooking these pigs. But then... As time went on, people sort of started demanding them. Um, so that's why it's sort of become an every-year every event. I did try goat, tried baby kid once, 
um, which everyone loved until they knew what it was and they didn't like it anymore, so I didn't do the goat again. But uh, the pig always goes down very well. Although, I have to say, the kids were always a bit squeamish about it at the start because of, you know, obviously the head and what have you. But after a while, they know how delicious it tastes, so they're, they're good with that. So that's it. There's my piggy. Here's my veg. <laughs> And then we're pretty re ready to serve. I'd leave the pig in there, because you've got all those lovely juices as well. You can mop up that juice with lots and lots of bread and stuff. Or just dump the, uh, dump the vegetables in it, it'd be delicious. And like I said, there's no ceremony. It's just nice, tasty food for everyone to dig into. So that's the first part of my celebratory meal done. The veg is ready to go. My pig's looking gorgeous. Um, can't wait to eat him. And all I've got to do now is make my, uh, my spiced apple tart to tap. Otherwise, the pastry just gets wet and it just dissolves. And that's, that's ready to go. You can put that in the fridge at this point. Stout sauce. 